Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel Tintel and I am the artist behind the Creative Siren. So I have been gone for a year. <laughs> I took a year off just to refocus and recenter myself and boy I am so glad to be back. I have the next year planned out with some amazing and some fun projects so i hope you guys are here for it if you are new to my channel my channel covers all things polymer clay we do sculptures and we do functional art covering jars tumblers whatever have you so stick around for some fun if you want to learn some cool techniques so we're going to kick off our new year um with this cute little planter inspired by the movie wally I am really excited about this one, you guys. I I couldn't help myself. I don't know why I decided to do the boot, but honestly, it's like my new favorite thing. Um, not only does it double as this really adorable decoration for your desk if you just want something cute, but you can actually put a plant in it. So without too much chit chat, let's go ahead and just jump right in. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is grab our planter and our clay and some foil and we're gonna start making a big round foil ball. This is gonna start creating the toe of our boot. Now grab another sheet of foil and fold it in half three times. We're gonna use this to wrap around the very top of our planter to elongate the height of our boot. Now I'm going to go ahead after I've wrapped around this foil all the way around the top of our ceramic pot is I'm going to secure it with some masking tape. Now I'm going to take the foil ball and go ahead and cover it with a light coat of liquid Sculpey and then wrap some ultra light all over that ball. This is going to allow us to get the volume that we need without adding the extra weight. Now here you'll notice that I did take the wooden coaster that comes with the ceramic pot. I went ahead and actually put the pot on top of that to give an added height to the back end of our shoe and it kind of gives room for the heel later on. And then I took an extra little bit of lightweight Super Sculpey to attach the ball to the ceramic pot. This also will help us create that bridge and elongate the shoe a little bit so that we can add laces later. Now I went ahead and poked some holes through the clay and the foil to allow any extra air to release and then threw it in the oven. Once it's done and completely cooled, I covered the entire shoe with some liquid Sculpey and then took a sheet of Super Sculpey and covered the entire piece. I also added some liquid Sculpey to the inside where the foil is and I covered that with some clay as well. Now any excess that you have here, don't cut it off, just roll it over and blend it down into the body of the shoe. This will allow you to cover up any foil that's kind of protruding over the top and give it a little bit of extra security on that top edge. Now I'm gonna take another sheet of polymer clay and I'm going to put it right through the middle of this boot to create that tongue. I am gonna cut it off a little bit taller than the outer brim of the boot and rough up the edges and then blend that bottom part down into the body of our boot. Now right here, I decided to take kind of this little sliver of clay. I found that this was so much easier than having to do a whole sheet around and this is going to again create that top neck of our boot and we want those little flappies that go on the inside where the eyelets for our shoelaces are going to be there so i'm going to add another sheet of clay right there to start creating that outer flap and you'll want to do that to both sides and then blend out the pieces that don't overhang on the tongue of the boot
Now I needed to add a little bit of more volume here because I am going to go in and add a little bit of wrinkling to the boot. So I'm adding just a tiny little sliver of clay here and blending it at the very base of our tongue. Now we're gonna start adding the wrinkles to the boot. That's what I'm doing with this little rope of clay here. I'm putting it through the top. I'm going to kind of flatten it out just a tiny bit and then blend those edges into our shoe. And that's gonna create a top wrinkle onto the shoe. It doesn't have to be as long as I have it here, but you know, add wrinkles with your heart. <laughs> and then go ahead and blend that little lip down into the tongue. It should have kind of this um, cliff look to it. Now I'm going in with another big rope, a thicker rope of clay, and we're gonna wrap it around the middle of the neck of our boot here. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the other rope of clay. We're gonna kind of smash it down just a little bit, flatten it out just a tiny bit, and then blend it into the boot. This again will create another distressing wrinkle on our neck. Same thing, except this piece is a little bit longer and it kind of curves down and follows the curvature of where the laces are gonna be on those outer flaps. kind of looks like a jacket right here. <laughs> if yours looks like a jacket, you're on the right path. <laughs> now I'm gonna take these smaller slivers of clay and I'm going to do the same thing, but right on where the heel is going to be. Imagine just kind of this imaginary line or this half circle going where the heel is. And that's where we're going to be putting these extra snakes on either side of the heel and one on the back. and we're gonna add yet another one to the nose of our shoe. Now here you'll see that I did add these little lines here, but I didn't like how that looked, so I went ahead and added more ropes of clay to elevate the distress and the wrinkle that I originally tried to do here with, my, with one of my sculpting tools. When you're all done adding all of your wrinkles, you're gonna take another sculpting tool. This one is flat and kind of square, and I use that to add the stitching on either side of where the laces are going to be on our shoe. And I did the same thing throughout the heel. So again, that imaginary half circle that goes all the way around, we're gonna kind of follow that and add these stitching lines. And then finally I went in with my silicone tip tool and just very lightly kind of grazed the entire shoe just to add some little distressing marks all over the whole body. And then go ahead and throw that into the oven. Now once it's out of the oven and nice and cool, we're gonna add a little bit of liquid Sculpey to the very top brim of the shoe and we're going to repeat what we did before. So you're gonna add a really thick rope of clay to the very, very top, and we're going to blend it down. This was a lot easier to do after it was done baking. That way the clay wasn't, you know, flopping all over the place and it's just, it's, it stays in place a lot better. Now I'm gonna add some more liquid Sculpey and I'm gonna add these little round discs of polymer clay so that I can start creating the eyelets for our laces. Should look something like that. Now on the bottom part of our shoe, I'm gonna add more <laughs> liquid Sculpey and another very long sheet of polymer clay. 
this totally made me feel like I was shoeing an actual shoe. <laughs> so I was feeling pretty good about myself. And then cut off any excess and don't forget to cut out where the drainage hole is for your potted plant. You wanna make sure that that's not covered up. So if you do actually have a plant in here, all the excess water's got someplace to go. <laughs> Now I'm gonna grab another really long rope of clay and I'm gonna wrap it around where the heel is going to be. I decided to kind of cut this up into two parts. It made it so much easier for me. And then I pressed it down firmly into the bottom part of the boot and then repeated the same process for the other half of the heel here. Again, pressing down firmly so we're just kind of flattening it out a little bit and then I'm going to blend the edges where the two pieces met so you can't tell <laughs> and then again blending the inside so it looks like all one piece now at this point I did take the same tool here it kind of looks like a big spoon and I used that to square off the entire heel and then took another sculpting tool um, that's got kind of a flat-ish edge and I used that to make a line around the outer edge of the heel as well as making the grooves for the tread. Now at this point, we're gonna start adding our laces. So go ahead and add a little bit of liquid Sculpey. Put some liquid Sculpey in all of the eyelets. I don't know why I'm doing it every other one. <laughs> and then at this point, I decided to use some cost clay to lace up my laces. That way, if there was any overhang from any of the laces, it would have the flexibility that I'm looking for and not easily break. So I started with the inside laces just because they are laced on the inside and then I added that top lace and then continued on with the rest of the lacing. Now for the extra bit of lacing here, I decided to add the aglet, of course, because my husband would not forgive me if I didn't. Thanks, Phineas and Ferb. <laughs> and then I kind of squiggled it about added a little bit of liquid clay and attached it to the shoe. Now go ahead and throw that back into the oven. Okay, now that our boot is completely done and cooled, we're gonna go ahead and paint the entire thing in this burnt umber brown. Afterwards, I'm going in with a dry brushing method, which basically is just that you take as much paint off of a dry brush as possible and lightly pass it along whatever it is that you're painting. I'm using a chestnut brown for this. I'm using this to highlight any wear spots that I really want to. So anything that's raised, I'm definitely putting this on and any spots in particular that I just feel need to be particularly worn. Now, after I've done all of that, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of black and I'm going to dry brush that along the bottom. You can do this as much or as little as you want. I just did this to kind of dirty up the sole, but also give this perception that it is darker than the rest of the boot. Then I went in with a little bit of the burnt umber with a mix of black in it. I did this to highlight the darker crevices and I did go over the toe just a little bit to give it a more dynamic look. I also went ahead and put this mixture on the laces as I felt like the laces should be just a tad darker than the rest of the body. Now I took the same mixture of burnt umber and black and I watered it down 
like crazy just so it's more like tinted water and I patted it along different areas of the boot because as it dries it'll kind of look like oil stains throughout the boot. Now once your boot is dried completely go ahead and grab a sheet of foil and we are going to start making the inner disc to hold our little plant. This is kind of where that little edge on the inside of our planter comes into play because I use that to help outline the shape of the inside. And then go ahead and cut it out so we can use it as our stencil on our clay. And save the rest of that foil there. I know it looks so wasteful, but you can save it and use it for texture balls later on for different projects. Now when you have that all baked, I didn't show this part here, but I did poke a hole right directly in the center of our little plate here because we are going to start forming the armature of our plant. We're gonna grab some armature wire and we're gonna twist it around. The ridges on the twisting actually allows for the clay to grip it a little bit better. So I'll add a little bit of liquid Sculpey and then wrap that guy in some clay. Now do leave about an inch to an inch and a half on the bottom of exposed wire. That way you have more than enough space to attach your little plant to your disc. After that, I set that aside and I grabbed some clay and I just started forming odd shaped little balls. They're gonna look like piles of dirt or rocks. And I just piled that all around the center hole that I already created. And then I grabbed my wire covered in clay. I stuck that in the middle and then I grabbed more clay and started piling that around to secure our plant base right in the center. And then you can maneuver your plant to be whatever shape that you'd like. Once I'm happy with the way that my dirt and my plant looks, I'm going to add some liquid Sculpey and fill in all of the gaps. Um, it's going to look like you're drenching the whole thing and that's kind of what we're doing. It allows us to kind of gravitate away from the rock look and it's going to look more like a pile of dirt in here once it's done baking. So be generous here and then just use your paintbrush to push it into all the nooks and crannies and then throw that guy back into the oven. Now once that's nice and cool, we're gonna go ahead and cut off any excess wire that's exposed at the bottom so that it lays flush with the rest of our little insert. And we're gonna start creating the leaves. I did use cost clay for these leaves as it was a lot easier. And again, I love the flexibility just in case I happen to knock into it. So we're gonna create kind of this elongated teardrop look and then fan out the edges to be a little bit fatter than the rest. and then just attach it to your plant base. Now you can use a little bit of liquid Sculpey or bake and bond to attach this to the base of your plant, but that's totally up to you. I ended up doing it later on just to add a little bit of security. You can add as many petals as you would like. I think I added two kind of right in the middle. I added one above that, those two, and then two at the bottom just because I felt like it. I think it looks more like the plant that's in the movie, but you can do it however you want. And then I took my needle tool here and I added some texture just to the top of the leaves. And then I did go in and I softened it just a little bit with my thumb so that it wasn't too sharp. And once I did that to all of the leaves, I went ahead and baked it again. After which I went in with this bright green color and I painted the entire plant. And then I went in with a chestnut color and I painted the base here. This is supposed to be the dirt. And 
Once those bases are dried, I went in with varied colors of brown. I think this is a chocolate brown here, and I watered it down a lot because I'm not going for a really heavy paint color here. I like the translucence of the watered down paint. I just want a little translucency. I also went in with the burnt umber and did the same thing. Now when I started painting the plant, I went in with a darker green on top and I took a paper towel and sponged off a lot of the excess. I didn't want too much green on the top. But then when I went in underneath, I went in with that same green and I just left it in its full color. And then when I got to the stalk of the plant, I just lightly dry brushed it and dabbed it just to give it a little bit of extra character. Then I went in with a lighter green here and I just kind of smudged it throughout the center of each petal. And then lightly dabbed it along the stalk of the plant, again to just add some highlights and some low lights. When I was happy with my paint job, I went in with some DuraClear so I can seal everything. This is ultra matte that I decided to use, though they do have a variety of finishes. And I pretty much covered everything that I painted. You'll want to do about two to three coats to really, really seal all of that paint in. And with the plant, I went in with actually some polyacrylic that I had in semi-gloss because I wanted that to stand out from the boot. And then go in with a Q-tip and some rubbing alcohol and clean up any paint that you happen to get on the ceramic pot. And there you have it. You now have this really, really adorable decoration slash planter. Oh my gosh, I am so obsessed with how this looks. It's just so whimsical and makes my heart so happy. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you on the next one. If you love this video, be sure to click here to see our last video. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss another tutorial. See you later. Bye.